Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. Today is February 1st, 2024. January is over. It's the longest year I've ever lived through. I am bringing you in this video a word at the end of this video that I, I got, I wrote down when I was in worship with God yesterday morning. I want to read that to you. I want to bring you my tortilla recipe. I'm just going to hold it up. Y'all just going to have to stop your videos and write it down or whatever. I mean, that's the best we can do today. If I can, I'll type it out in the description box but base y'all it's just pretty basic i had a successful tortilla time yesterday so i'm gonna share that with you i'm probably going to bring you a town story about our town drunk all right and uh alonzo alfred whichever way you want to call him that's coming in at the end of the video so those are the things i'm bringing you uh here is my take this is a red alert video all right, this is a red alert video because the attacks are imminent. I can say that with confidence. We are at the cusp of another shifting is what I, that's my opinion. The Lord's not necessarily telling me that. I'm. I, it's just kind of a common sense look. I can look at what's happening. Y'all, you can. We've got eyes. We've got a brain. You can see what's going on. We're about, the things are about to shift again in the Middle East. There is going to be retaliation and it is just a stinking fact. All right. So I am sensing in the atmosphere, it is a sorrow. My heart is heavy and it's heavy not because not because of the war itself that's happening, although I've kind of gotten used to that thought. Uh, I'm heavy. It's heavy. I know there are family members receiving calls from their loved ones in the military, like their last call before they have to go silent. Their loved ones are in harm's way, and there is a tension on the home front. If you're plugged into anything going on at all, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all tell me, are you sensing this too? What are you seeing? What are you thinking? What is your strategy and response? Those are the things I want to hear from you. You're the voice. I'm just one voice. Y'all are many voices. And I, I, I don't know. So, uh, so that's what I believe. That is where we're at. Y'all, we're on the brink. Do you remember my dad's dream a couple weeks ago where he was on the brink of a canyon and looking over into the bottomless pit and fire was falling down on him? That, I feel like we're right on the edge, y'all. That's what it feels like to me today. Am I okay? Yeah. Am I rejoicing and singing and praising? You bet. Am I fixing to go have a good time? Yeah. I'm having, my life has not changed horribly, but I'm not sure it's not fixing to. So that is kind of in the back of my head gnawing at me. All right. Now I want to tell you quickly, uh, there are, there, I, I, I know Canadian prepper isn't a, a believer in Jesus Christ, y'all. And I know that m most of us are, I don't, I don't think we just totally discount people just because they're not believers that doesn't mean they don't have good information use your sifter all right the holy spirit and whatever you can glean from him i i think he puts forth some pretty good information from time to time and at other times i'm just like mm, no sorry i'm done uh so that i i will say ny prepper is putting out great information also i saw uh, we had a fighter pilot fighter fighter erase that a fighter plane go over our house yesterday it sounded like a freaking rocket y'all it was it was loud and fast and low so that happened to us yesterday we live 30 miles from an air force base so that's i i'm like that that's probably where it came from so i'm not like oh where's it coming from or where's it going it's not that it's just that doesn't happen that's unusual, even living by an Air Force base. We have had, are they Chinook helicopters, y'all? I don't know what they're called. They're the black, big black helicopters. They're not Ospreys, although we have had those go over our house before. Uh, the, but we're seeing, I have seen the black helicopters fly over. Uh, that's been in the last four days. All right, so those are the things happening 
at, on my property that are going on. What I decided to do yesterday, y'all, was here's what I'm prepping, all right? First of all, I did, oh shoot, y'all, I was going to buy show you that link. I can't remember. I'll, I'll put it, I'll get it to you. The link to the big purchase item I bought, which was a camp stove, Alpine something or other. It's a, it's a, it's a barrel stove. Um, so, uh, that should be coming next week, which I'm glad. I'll be glad when it gets here, although I'm not freaking out about it one way or the other. So, in prepping, I'm working on my skills. One of the things I think about is bread, food, like bread, like I get yeast bread, okay? We can make yeast bread, all right? That's, and I've got yeast in the freezer, y'all. So, I, and I've got a sourdough starter, so we can make sourdough bread, but sometimes uh, a tortilla is the best kind of bread to know how to make because it can, uh, you can roll it, you can put stuff in it, roll it and go. All right. That's one of the things I like about a tortilla. It can be a meal all in one. You don't need a plate for it. So you don't need water to clean the plate. Does that make sense? So, I mean, like we love tortillas here. We love good tortillas. Let me let me just define that. We like good tortillas in my family, and we are a little like snooty about that. We don't like it. Okay, so there you go. We're connoisseurs of tortillas. All right, there you go. So the I really not. I've tried to make them, y'all, and they don't come out right. They're too tough. They're they be, they break when you when you roll them. So so I found this recipe, and I'm gonna just hold it up to the camera and talk. While you can pause the can, you can pause it. And here is here are the ingredients. And y'all, it is it is a matter of just get your liquid, your butter, and that water as hot as you can, as hot as your hands can stand it. And then here here are the directions on what how to do it. All right. So the key is being patient, or at least it was for me. Be patient, let the dough do what it's going to do, like let it rest a lot, and you got to knead it a lot. So if you're going to make this, ha have something to listen to or something while you're making it, or, or else it kind of gets tedious. Or maybe you just like the quiet, I don't know. So if I need to put that up again, y'all let me know, and like I say, I'll try to type something out for you. But uh, the key is to get that dough like so soft, like when you twist it or roll it, it you, there are no seams. It's so soft. So I would have brought you a tortilla to show, except they're gone. Like, I made 10 tortillas yesterday. They're gone, all right? So the proof's in the pudding. It's a good recipe. The butter and the salt, I think, was for us the kicker for we like that flavor. Real butter. And uh, I was going to say real salt, but... <laughs> real butter and uh the salted butter and also another thing that we that helped me so much i got an electric skillet y'all it i thought it was going to be little but it actually is big and i will show that to you later also uh it is um it three put that on 375 and then you could go tortillas just boom boom but you don't have to what i had been doing was using a cast iron skillet on the stove and i have an electric stove so i'd have to take it off on to cool it to get too hot i couldn't keep a consistent temperature so tortilla 101 as if i know anything which i don't i need to get my neighbor celia tienda over here now that that she knows tortillas but she's told me a few tips so but basically getting that dough as soft as you can so that i wish i had a tortilla to show you i'll make them again and then i'll show y'all but you can't beat butter and honey on a tortilla i to me that's like mm. maybe butter and sugar and cinnamon so there you go there's your tortilla tips for the day all right uh so i'm going to bring you this word it is about war all right uh but it is also about our tasks while these things are unfolding in front of us in our lifetime, y'all. Per God. And your task ain't my task. So you cannot compare yourself to other people. Like, look what they're doing. I must be falling short. 
or look what they're doing i'm doing it right and they they're going to be a sorry piece of you know what on the sidewalk because they ain't doing it right no you we cannot compare this is not the time to do that this is the time to just like kind of oh what did our brother paul tell us run our own race yes Philippians, run your own race and just keep your eyes on the finish line, which is heaven. All right. We don't belong to this world, y'all. So we need to remember that we are homeward bound. We're just visiting here. All right. January 31st, 2024. Here is what the Lord, what I heard the Lord say. And then you can filter this through prayer and the Holy Spirit. All right. If you have a Bible verse that you're inspired by, put it in the comment section so we can all be blessed by it. All right, here we go. Write this down, daughter. I am showing you, my children, what is coming. As I am showing you the wars ahead of you, I am telling you, do this. For each of you are my dearest ones. Each of you is different. None of you are exactly the same. Therefore, each of you have different tasks in the coming days of the shaking. Look not only for these events I have told you about to unfold. Instead, and also look at what I give to you as your assignment. For a, I reveal this to those who seek Shall I tell you again, shall I use the same words you have come to know, words I've used to warn you, for you know them well by now. But I will tell you again, if it will turn your hearts, heads, your, turn your heads and hearts to my way, cataclysmic, and all that goes with this word. And so I asked Father, I said, what point are you trying to make as you, like, you know, I just wasn't, like, narrowing, narrowing, narrowing in on it. I was like, I need it streamlined, Father. So, he's so gracious and kind. So, here's what I heard him say. It is of great value, my children, to know of the disasters coming, the shiftings and shockwaves. This is true. This is why I warn. This is why you listen and warn others. I want you to stand in faith. I also, dear children, want you to seek me as your own children seek a wise mother, a wise father. For counsel, ask me, what shall I do then when these, what, ask me, what shall I do then when these disasters are upon me? Look back, I tell you to generate, I'm sorry. Look back, I tell you, to generations gone by, generations past. Not everyone did everything, but some were meant to sow. Some were meant to plumb. Some were meant to doctor. Some were meant to read. So you see, each small thread woven together makes a large cloth. Seek your thread in me. But also seek your thread to be woven together yourselves. Allow me to hem your edges so none of you will unravel, becoming tattered and disconnected from the others. Yes, my children, I am showing you your days ahead. Time is near. Time is running out. Time is upon you. Time is limited. Time is up. It is with joy, with faith, I tell you to ask me, show me, Abba, what do I do now? What do I do next? What food do I set aside? What item do I obtain? Whom do I go speak to? Whom shall I pray for? Ask me, and I will not only show you what is to come, but your purpose in me. Together stand strong, for the coming rage of the enemy is like nothing you have seen before, as you endure the harshness of his death threats. Remember, I am your rock, your shield, your foundation, your family, your power, your strength, your love. 
Your body will feel these blows. Your spirit is mine. I am your comfort. Let me soothe your pain, heal your wounds, saying to yourselves without pause, Love and mercy found me. Jesus, my Lord. And that was it. So, I share that with you. And what we glean from that, y'all, is that we all have something to add to the family. All right? So, don't feel like you have to cover all your bases. Just cover the ones God is showing you. And some people have the purpose of ministering to people. So, some people are gathering stuff, like survival stuff, food, water, whatever. And some people are being called to to be the people person. Does that make sense? So, whatever your task is, you don't have to be a rock star prepper to get through what what's coming ahead of us. All you need is God. Because he promises he'll show us. He'll protect us. And you may, listen, listen, you may not make it. Your body might not make it through what's coming. But your spirit is eternal. So we need not be afraid of what's ahead of us. We just obey God. And it may get as hard as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being put in the fiery furnace. What did they do? Obey. What did they say? Whether we live or die, all glory to God. I'm paraphrasing there, but basically that's what they said. Did they obey? Yes. Did they bow to that golden statue Nebuchadnezzar put up? No. And did they bear the consequences? Yes. Did a miracle happen? Yes. Was God glorified and did people repent and come to him? Yes. Y'all, those are the things we might be facing. So you need to get studied up on what's in the Bible. First and foremost, y'all. And then remember, our Lord is loving and kind and gracious and good. I, do, I am not the person that the Lord is giving words to about fiery judgment and coming first to the church and then being, you know, I, the Lord is giving me some things about that. I'm not the one with that message. There are other people, I believe, that are meant to give that message. And I don't know if it's because I'm a woman. It may be. I I don't know. But it's not, it's not what the Lord primarily tells me to share with you. The Lord tells me to share his hope. The Lord is hope. So if you're listening to people that don't give you hope and just make you scared to death of God, then, then you're listening to the wrong people. Yes, there is always that moment where you realize I'm a sinner and I'm lost without him. And you come to the cross and you repent and you're baptized and you commit your life to him and you follow him because you love him and believe in him. You believe Jesus is the son of God. And then you just go <laughs> grow in that. Don't stay wallowing and crying at the foot of the cross. Don't forget the cross. But you, you don't have to stay crippled up and wadded up at the bottom of it, crying and wailing and, and always feeling guilty about what a crappy person you are. Uh, newsflash, we're all crappy people. I had a commenter say, you're, you're being mean. And I, I am mean. <laughs> That's my kids. <laughs> Y'all, I wish I were not mean, but sometimes I am mean. So I, I, I want to repent of that, but I don't wallow in it with guilt. Reminding myself day after day what a mean person I am. I acknowledge it. I say, Lord, I, I want you to fix that in me. And go on. And go love and hug on somebody. All right. I'm going to tell you a story now. I'm going to tell you a story. I do have more Miss Linda stories. And y'all, I'm, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to switch it. I'm not going to tell you about Alonzo. Because 
I'm just y'all, that's a little bit negative. I'm gonna tell you about Miss Linda. Now, Miss Linda's a believer in Jesus Christ, all right? She has all kinds of stories that go with her. And she has this way she talks that I can imitate and I have to be real careful because I don't want to hurt her feelings or anything. But she's around, like I said, she's she's late seventies now. She was a chain smoker forever. She's on oxygen now, she doesn't smoke anymore. And her husband's name's Bubby. Not Bubba. Bubby. So it's Bubby and Linda. They live right around the corner from me. I have known them and they have been the most gracious, wonderful neighbors and brothers and sisters and parents to me and all kinds of things to me. So I love them dearly. I would die for them in an instant. That's how much I love them. All right. So Linda, she likes to gamble. Not only does she smoke, she likes to gamble. Now, is she addicted to gambling? No, she's not. But all year long, y'all, all year. She saves her money. She budgets budgets money. And then, see, Bubby doesn't like to go anywhere. He farms, all right? So he's just farm. When he's not farming, he's sitting and resting. And then when he's farming, he farms as hard as he can. That's Bubby, all right? He's an excellent farmer. Linda, she likes to go and do, all right? So she has her money, and sometimes she goes to Rodosa and to gamble. And sometimes she goes to Las Vegas to gamble. And she always takes her sister, Verna Marie. Verna Marie and I are going to Las Vegas to go gamble. And so that's what she does. And she'll, she'll say, oh, me and Sue and Verna Marie are going to Red Dosa this weekend to, to gamble. And okay, so she gambles, all right? Now, y'all, I, I am not encouraging you to gamble, but whatever, y'all, you do, whatever, however you got to square that, y'all do it. All right, so... Linda came over to my house one day. She was fixing to go to, with Verna Marie to Red Osa to go gamble. She's in my living room. My kids were little. And, and she said, you know, I was talking to Brother Aaron. Now, Brother Aaron, at that time, was the pastor at the Baptist church. We are, But we were Church of Christ, and there was Baptist. Now, Brother Aaron, I would describe as being this much pious and thought he had to kind of police everybody. So, you know, he came and went. Those pastors come and go, you know. We're like, it's only a matter of time before you get the call to go somewhere else or whatever the Baptists do. So, anyway, Linda's in my living room, smoking, holding her cigarette out the front door so I was sure she wouldn't get smoke in my house. And she's like, I ran into Brother Aaron. And I said, yeah, what'd he say? She said, he told me... I shouldn't be going and gambling. He said, gambling's a sin. I shouldn't. I said, I told him. I budget all year, and I'm not addicted to it. Brother Aaron, I'll go gamble if I want to. And you know Brother Aaron said? And I said, what did Brother Aaron say? She said, Brother Aaron said, what you do with Jesus when you go gambling? And she said, I just looked him straight in the eye, and I said, I take him along and show him a good time. And then she just took a puff on cigarette and said, see you when I get back. And she and Verna Marie left. They went to Red Dosa or Las Vegas, wherever they were going that time. And I have no doubt that she did take Jesus along and did show him a good time. I do not doubt that for a minute. But the point is, that is a, she is a treasure to us because, go y'all, I could write a book this big on things she has said that are just, I mean, you just can't make that stuff up. You cannot make it up. So anyway, there's your Linda story. Y'all go forth and have a good day. And remember, you are a treasure to our Lord. And you have a task. And it's a beautiful task. And he's going to show you what it is. <sighs> Hold the line, Texas. Stay safe, America. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.